The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Good morning and welcome to worship. We're glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Martin here at Holy Cross in Herndon, Virginia. And whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever your life experience is, you are welcome among us. Just a few things before we begin worship on this in Northern Virginia is a very snowy morning. A good time for you all to be home <laughs> and uh, with your hot beverage and, and watching us as we do worship together. Just a couple things, as I mentioned, uh, the adult Bible study will happen today. There is no communion, uh, partly because, well, mainly because we had a, a COVID case in our worship team so that uh, we have all been in quarantine for a, this last week. Uh, we are all fine, and none of us, uh, besides the one person, got, got COVID, so we're happy for that. And so we'll be back to normal starting uh, tomorrow. And so next week, we'll, on the 14th and the 21st, we'll have communion. There will be adult Bible study tonight, today at 11.30, and we're starting a new book, Book of Esther. And it's a wonderful book, not studied very often, and uh, it needs, it should have more study to it. It's a great, uh, great little book, and invite you to join us today on Zoom. There's a Zoom link on your weekly update. And then speaking of Bible studies, the Tuesday Bible study continues uh, Jeremy will be looking at All Creation Sings and the songs or hymns in that new supplemental hymnal. I um, want to thank everyone. We, we found out that Link, our, our, one of our local food banks, was really low on food. And so Jeremy put up an Amazon link for Link uh, yesterday. And what would you say, 600 We already have $600 worth of food coming. So we want to thank you for that. Both of the bins were full this morning, so thank you. Thank you for your food. It goes a long ways to help our neighbors in need. I um, also saw some coats that have come in, so thank you for that, because that continues to be a need for our day workers in our neighborhood. With that, we begin worship.
Neglected to mention that the flowers today have a special meaning. They're to remember John Kratzky, who, who passed from us a year ago. And so we remember John and honor his memory with the flowers today. And invite us to stand as we're able, as we come before God, seeking wholeness and mercy. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters whose mercy is poured out on all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search, you search us, us and, know and know us. us. You, you are acquainted with all our ways. ways. We, we confess, confess that, that our hearts are burdened by sin, sin our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even, Even before, before the words, words are on our tongues, you, you know, know them. them. Receive, Receive them in your divine mercy. mercy. Amen. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and the promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away. And we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Christ Be Our Light. Oh, 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. This holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Father, receive our prayer. 
Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people. Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. As our response to the reading from 1 Samuel, we will read Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rains for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not the strength of the horse nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those whose hope in his steadfast love. Hallelujah. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Praise God, praise God, all you little children. God is love, 
God is love. Praise God, praise God, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. It's good to have you here. It's good to be here. Uh, Mortimer and all his friends are taking a snow day today, so they're out <laughs> enjoying the snow. So you just get me. Yay. So, uh, yeah. so we'll try to keep it interesting. So, you all know what this is, right? One of these. Probably see a lot of these throughout the week. Probably go to school on them, maybe go to work on them. And you've got one of these. You know what those are, right? Everyone knows this is part of our lives right now. And uh, even more so than last year, but it's just part of who we are and how we function. Most of us have one of these things in our homes, at least one. And uh, if not, we have other things that are similar. So the, these are great things until, until they go black, right? Until they run out of batteries. And we all have had that where you're working on something and you get that little notice that says your, your, your computer's about to go to bed or your phone is about to, to die and you have to find that cord and put it in so it can be recharged. The gospel reading today is an interesting story about healing and wholeness, something we're going to sing in the, later in the hymn. It's about wholeness and healing. But there's also a little story there that Jesus goes off and has some quiet time by himself for prayer and for rest, and I think for some recharge. We sometimes forget to take care of our own selves. We're so busy doing school and work and, and all the things that we have to get done that we forget that we too, like these mighty electronic things, we need to be recharged. Once in a while, we need to have a Sabbath or a time off to rest. In fact, it's one of the first things God told the people to take a day of rest, a time to recharge, to find joy in not doing something for a little while, to pray, to worship, but to rest. Jesus gives us that example. And if Jesus needed time to rest, I think I do too, and so do you. We need a chance to reconnect with God, reconnect with ourselves, reconnect with creation. So, when our battery gets low, recharge. Thanks. Our second reading is from Paul's first letter the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
I invite us to stand for the reading of the gospel. first chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for them, for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for this is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Please be seated. In this first part of the book of Mark, a new thing is happening. This first gospel that is written opens with an activity that is fast and furious. Mark's favorite word is immediately, and it's found a number of times scattered throughout this gospel. Jesus immediately does this. They immediately go here. Because Mark is in a hurry. Things are happening. And written a generation after Jesus, Mark is excited to show people that this good news came among us and continues to reach out to us. And it's clear in this first chapter that this good news is different. We've already had people say, who is this? He speaks with such authority. But it's clear that he also acts with authority. And this first chapter shows us not only his words, but his deeds are here to help humankind. That God is doing a new thing. The kingdom of God is among us, is at hand, Jesus says. And these are the signs of the kingdom. There's a looseness of things that possess us that we saw last week. A liberation for those things that lay us down, trap us, and lie to us. A promise of life that is true. And of new life that goes beyond death. There's also a concern for what ails us. And so we see the healing part of Jesus this week. And Jesus comes into their communities and he brings healing. We know a lot still that there's, there's a lot of need for healing in our, in our world. We all know that we are trapped and surrounded rather by a, a pandemic that's almost a year old now. It is a year old. It's just not been a year old here. And it's frightened and concerned us, kept us trapped our own worship team experienced that this week where we had to stay in our homes for a week and we were counting on how blessed that was because it was just a week. But many of us have been trapped and broken in our homes for longer than that. 
we've mourned as we've seen loved ones and friends, people we know that have passed. We see our healthcare workers and other frontline workers, including teachers, put at risk. And there's still a wonder about when it will end. We're at a point in our, in our time when almost half a million people in our nation have died from this pandemic and 2.3 million people worldwide have died. That's a tremendous toll on our physical, psychological, and spiritual beings. And it'll take us years, I think, to get over this. We may get vaccinated, we may feel safe to go out and, again, but this, this has rattled us to our core as a people, as a society, as a, as a group that has prided ourselves in our science and our medicine, we realize how vulnerable we still are. So what ails us? It's not just a pandemic, but it's a reality that we are not always in charge. And what ails us is not just COVID, but it's the, all the other maladies that we have as human beings because we are mortal. It's cancer and diabetes and depression, maybe just NUE. It's just that feeling of not focus. Some of those ailments are inside and some are outside. Some are diagnosed and some are not. Some can be treated and regrettably some are fatal. What ails us is a multitude of things that touch us and those we love. And that's part of being human. And maybe we want to cry out to Jesus, why, why are we not healed like everyone else? And it's good to remember that Jesus doesn't heal everyone in his community, but only many. One of my favorite movies, it's a little campy now, but when Jesus Christ Superstar came out as a movie, it was something new. And there's a scene there where Jesus is surrounded by people that want to touch him, want to be healed, and he finally yells in frustrations because he can't, his humanness cannot actually reach out to all people. And you can sense that need, that limitation, that that is not fully what he's for. What ails us? We still long for healing, as we'll sing in a few minutes. We long for wholeness. We long for a society that is just. And we still ask God to bring us wholeness, healing, restoration, regeneration, and resurrection. As I said in the children's sermon, there's just also this need for Jesus to show us what it's like to take Sabbath. The synod pastors and other uh, leaders have been going through a continuing ed class this month on Sabbath because pastors, believe it or not, are really bad at taking Sabbath and taking care of ourselves. We need that time to rest. It's one of the first things God told us is to take rest because that is the way we're designed. We live in a Western culture that prides being busy, being active in accomplishment. We live in a community that is the hyper part of that achievement goal, where there are perfectionists and overachievers abound. And it's good to hear that Jesus takes time to rest bring wholeness to himself so that he can rest or bring that wholeness and give Sabbath to others, give wholeness and healing to others. We become restored. And we come like Simon's mother-in-law, someone now that can serve, can serve. That last part always bothered me as a kid. It's like, so did Jesus heal her just so that they could have some food? 
just always struck me as odd. And then someone pointed out to me that in her culture, the fact that Jesus came into her house and she could not serve him because he, she was ailing brought shame upon their house and upon her. And he liberates her from that shame. It's just the fact that she can serve now shows that she's whole and that she's restored. And honor is now part of her. She's completed. And she, like us, is called back into serving others so that others can find that same healing, that same wholeness, that same restoration. As we hear in our liturgy, we are part of the new creation community. We're restored from what possesses us, from what ails us. Each day we are called to lay those burdens down. And then, liberated by the God who calls us and claims us, we can look around at others in our world, in our homes, in our community, that also need those chains lifted off, their stomachs filled, their bodies clothed, and what possesses them and what ails them can be brought down and off and set free. In Jesus' name, that is who we are. We are the oldest healing, resurrection people, and we go to proclaim that the kingdom of God among us, and we live it out broken, ailing, and healed every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We sing our hymn, O Christ the Healer, We Have Come. And uh, we were discussing today, this may be uh, unfamiliar for many of you, but I think, again, the tune is, is easy once we go through it. So. Let us confess our faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he, and he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us now offer our prayers for the Church, for the world, and for all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospitals, hospice and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy O God. God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle in the rain and the rainwater they drink for the humility to take our place among all the creatures of the earth. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and con countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find them find freedom and service to those most in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, Have mercy o, God. o God. We're all wearied by life's burdens. For those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sicknesses, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy o, o God. God. For this community of faith, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, for outreach and social ministries center here, especially our English, English language learners program, our partnership with Herndon Middle School, and our support for programs that feed the hungry, for all the ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this place who open us to see new understandings, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy O oh God. God. For what else do the people of God pray? For all these things spoken aloud and in our hearts, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy O God. God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that their lives serve as a witness to the goodness of God. We think especially of our brother John this week. Let us bless, bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, silent or spoken, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with, with you. you. As we say each week, that peace does trans transcend all those barriers that separate us right now for in, in this time of, of uh, pandemic and we are surrounded by God's love together. This is also the time when we would normally take a physical offering. So we lift that to you as if you are led to, to, to contribute on the link in the comment section on the Facebook. I want to thank those who give faithfully through regular electronic giving or sending in their, uh, their checks for those who give food and, and clothing. All this is how we proclaim that the kingdom of God is in our midst. Thank you.
sing stanza three of our offertory, Light Dawns on a Weary World. <laughs> Receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child, with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with that same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to live and to pray. Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Final hymn, I love to tell a story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my heart. As nothing else can do, I love to tell the story, will be my feeling glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. story, how pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some has never heard the message of and his love. 
go forth in this assurance that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers or things present or things to come nor powers nor height nor depth or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And may God the creator strengthen us Jesus the beloved fill us and the Holy Spirit the comfort us Keep us in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to, be God. to God. Amen.